the British rearmed the French and helped them drive the Viet Minh out of Saigon. The Viet Minh fought back, but they had few weapons to use against the French troops. In the south, the French retained control. 1940. Japan replaced France as the dominant power in Vietnam, proclaiming Asia for the Asiatics. After Japan's defeat in 1945, the Vietnamese, led by Ho Chi Minh, declared their independence. They hoped the Allies would support them, but the British, who came to take Japan's surrender, rearmed the French and helped them drive the Viet Minh out of Saigon. The Viet Minh fought back, but they had few weapons to use against the French troops and the Viet Minh's brutal tactics alienated other southern nationalists. The French retained control. In public, relations were cordial, but in fact, the French and Vietnamese negotiators were far apart. The negotiations held at the historic Fontainebleau Chateau went badly. In public, relations were cordial, but in fact, the French and Vietnamese negotiators were far apart. Ho could not be hopeful in a speech he gave to a group of Vietnamese in Paris. People in Vietnam want their relatives in France to bring presents when they come to visit. Now the Vietnamese who are living in France can also rightly ask their friends and relatives who come from Vietnam, especially Uncle Ho, to bring them some kind of present. But I have no concrete presents for you, like fruit, or cakes, or jobs. All I can give you is this slogan. The nation comes first, the fatherland above all else. The negotiations held at the historic Fontainebleau Chateau went badly. We only need an ordinary police operation for eight days to clean all of you out. <laughs> There was no need for negotiations. The solution had to come from Fontainebleau. Then the negotiations at Fontainebleau failed. We only need an ordinary police operation for eight days to clean all of you out. There was no need for negotiations. Ho Chi Minh's political credibility was at stake, and he pleaded for some compromise. But there was no common ground. He left in September with only a vague promise of future negotiations. The solution had to come from Fontainebleau. Then the negotiations at Fontainebleau failed. From then on, relationships deteriorated. The climate deteriorated. The March Agreement was dead. From then on, relationships deteriorated. The climate deteriorated. We arrived thinking we were going to be welcomed by the population, happy to see the French again. Then our opinions changed about the Vietnamese. They don't want us, so we have to make them see reason. And we all had friends in the infantry who had been killed. 
qui avait été tué aussi. Alors, euh, so there was a growing il y feeling. avait un état d'esprit qui, qui, qui s'instaurait. After all we did for them, it was the usual way of Alors, thinking. C'était le raisonnement moyen. Là, il y avait une, we une wanted to teach them a lesson. de donner une leçon. The March Agreement was dead. I realized that the only correct thing for me to do was to follow the same path. At first, we did not have any weapons except for bamboo spears. I realized that the only correct thing for me to do was to follow the same path. I worked for a long time as a contact person, gathering intelligence on the French military post. We had a person working inside the post. I would go out there and yell at him, saying that he owed me money and that he intended to cheat me of my money. He would then come down to pay me for this supposed debt. He would give me a 10 piastre bill, for example, with a message folded inside it. I would then give him a 5 piastre bill as change. Again, there would be a message folded inside. Without these tricks, the French would have found out and we would have all been killed. When the revolution came, I joined it. Besides carrying a gun to fight the French colonizers, I also wrote songs for the soldiers, for the young people, and for the peasants. I wrote a song for the soldiers in the National Defense League, which was called To the Front. The words of the song are, Forward, brave soldiers. The nation resounds with the words, Fight to the end. March bravely under gunfire. The Vietnamese army is carving out the soul of its fatherland. March forth to victory. March forward with the soul of Vietnam. The French scornfully called the Viet Minh the Barefoot Army. Ho Chi Minh said, we may lose 10 Vietnamese for every Frenchman, but in the end, we will win. They fought a guerrilla war as they built their strength. At first, we did not have any weapons except for bamboo spears. But they placed so many limitations on his regime that to many Vietnamese, it did not seem at all independent. 1950 brought a new source of help to the Viet Minh. But they placed so many limitations on his regime that to many Vietnamese, it did not seem at all independent. There was no reason anymore for the war to continue. Well, it went on, because the Viet Minh did not want that kind of independence, labeled Bao Dai independence. They wanted Viet Minh independence. They wanted independence by force, forged in blood, because the Viet Minh were hoping that would unify the country behind them. 1950 brought a new source of help to the Viet Minh. Lines were being drawn in a continuing Cold War. In the early 50s, the United States had a concept of communism, international communism, as a hard, monolithic block. Lines were being drawn in a continuing Cold War. On orders from the Kremlin, Russia had launched a Cold War. The United States was obliged to help Europe safeguard its traditional freedoms and the independence of its nations. Already an iron curtain had dropped around Poland, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, menace to the security and institutions of democratic government. In the early 50s, the United States had a concept of communism, international communism, as a hard, monolithic block. 
Viet Minh war capacities improved dramatically. We used the new weapons to mount offensives against the French. We were able to wipe out two large French units and capture all their weapons. The way was cleared for communications between Vietnam and the outside world. Viet Minh war capacities improved dramatically. Bolstered by his nearby ally, General Jap planned to change his strategy in 1951 from guerrilla warfare to conventional battle. First, he had to secure the supply lines through Lang Son and Cao Bang on the mountainous northern border of Vietnam. We used the new weapons to mount offensives against the French. We were able to wipe out two large French units and capture all their weapons. The way was cleared for communications between Vietnam and the outside world. It was still small, but it had become international, supported on both sides by major powers. By the end of 1953, America was paying 80% of the war. It was still small, but it had become international, supported on both sides by major powers. The French sent out a new commander, World War II hero Jean de Latre de Tassigny. General de Latre took control His charismatic leadership revitalized French morale. General Jap, who had overextended his fledgling troops, was stopped cold and forced to return to hit-and-run tactics. Politically, though, Ho Chi Minh was gaining strength. In 1950, the Soviet Union and China had recognized his government. In 1951, he reasserted the authority of the Vietnamese Communist Party and renamed it the Vietnamese Workers' Party. In 1951, I left the resistance because I did not want to be a communist stew. Ho Chi Minh and his clique had said that they would disband the Communist Party. But the Communist Party remained intact with its three-man cells and party cells in the army, as well as in the entire administration and population. For this reason, I left. And I remember that when I left the resistance area for the nationalist area, I cried, but I did not have any choice. Most Vietnamese, especially in the north, still supported the Viet Minh against Bao Dai's state of Vietnam. In an effort to give the emperor more credibility and to reduce French casualties, the French formed a national army for the state of Vietnam. They called it Le Jeunissement, the yellowing of the army. De Latre went to the United States to ask for money for Le Jeunissement. Je viens ici en soldat pour expliquer à mes camarades soldats De Latre stressed U.S.-French solidarity, but in fact, relations were uneasy. France accepted American aid, but rejected American pressures to give the anti-communist Vietnamese greater independence. The French knew the Americans would continue to pay for their battle against communism. Je dis tout de suite, merci à l'Amérique. There were a good many among the French who somehow had a, uh, an incorrect but rather sneaky idea that somehow the United States was trying to replace them in Indochina. That was the last thing in our minds. We had a basket full. We didn't need to think about such considerations. So it was, it was not easy, and the succession of French governments there were relatively weak politically. They were on narrow edges. And um, the question was how far a French government could go and remain in power. France was averaging a new government every three to four months. Each justified the war on grounds of national honor and the defense of Western civilization. But as public opposition grew, some politicians began to speak out against the war. 
c'était dissimuler l'échec. They wanted at all costs to hide the failure, so they would go all the way, send the troops needed, the money, they were sacrificing so many other things that could have been done in France. And meanwhile, there was nothing to win, but everything to lose. French government pronouncements became more doubtful about success in Indochina. General de Latre's death from cancer in February 1952 seemed to many a symbol of France's continuing losses. The French fought on. By the end of 1953, America was paying 80% of the war. The French controlled the day, the Viet Minh the night. General Henri de Navarre came in as the fifth French commander in five years. The French controlled the day, the Viet Minh the night. The French public called it the Dirty War. The army was losing officers faster than it could train new ones. Morale was bad among the troops, even though there were no draftees. The war was fought by foreign legionnaires and French colonial soldiers. General Henri de Navarre came in as the fifth French commander in five years. French units were set up in remote areas supplied by air. Their mission was to search out and destroy the Viet Minh. The French planned to test their new strategy in a valley set among the western mountains, 170 miles from Hanoi. Their mission was to search out and destroy the Viet Minh. After early successes, the French asked the Americans for more money. The president was receptive. Eisenhower had been elected, promising to end the war in Korea without, as he put it, appeasing the communist aggressors. The Cold War was still on, and Eisenhower's Secretary of State led the crusade. The rulers of communist China train and equip in China the troops of their puppet Ho Chi Minh. They supply these troops with large amounts of artillery and ammunition made in Soviet bloc countries. They supply military and technical guidance in the staff section of Ho Chi Minh's command at the division level and in specialized units such as the signal... Dulles argued that Indochina would be the first domino. The plan is not only to take over Indochina, but to dominate all of Southeast Asia. The struggle thus carries a grave threat not only to Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, but also to such friendly neighboring countries as Thailand, Malaya, Burma, Indonesia, the Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. President Eisenhower sent Vice President Richard Nixon to Asia as his personal representative. In Vietnam in 1953, Nixon visited the battlefields to show support for the French. He promised more American arms and he strongly opposed any compromise with the communists. The French planned to test their new strategy in a valley set among the western mountains, 170 miles from Hanoi. Sometimes, we just slept on the roadsides if there were no shelters around. The French command was inviting a battle because they thought the Viet Minh would never be able to get enough troops and guns to Dien Bien Phu. Sometimes, we just slept on the roadsides if there were no shelters around. The French were physically large and they had many weapons. But we Vietnamese had something which we could use as a weapon against them. And that was our morale, our courage. 
Tôi cảm nghĩ thấy là có to lớn, nhưng mà chúng tôi We were determined to fight the French until the end. Bởi vì người Pháp sang đây ấy là áp bức. Because the French came here to steal our land and the press. Chúng tôi khổ, chúng tôi quyết tâm chúng tôi đánh. Và đánh đến That was how I felt. Đây là ý nghĩ của chúng tôi thì như thế. The French command was inviting a battle because they thought the Viet Minh would never be able to get enough troops and guns to Dien Bien Phu. 51,000 Viet Minh soldiers, four times the number of French troops, crossed the mountains carrying supplies on their backs and bicycles and hauling guns. Both sides had a special reason for wanting to win at Dien Bien Phu. At this same time, January 1954, the great powers were meeting in Berlin. They... 51,000 Viet Minh soldiers, four times the number of French troops, crossed the mountains carrying supplies on their backs and bicycles and hauling guns. Chinese and Soviet trucks also brought equipment over roads built by thousands of peasants. And there were Chinese advisors at the battlefront who tried to direct Jap's planning. On the first days, we designed an operation against the entrenched camp. A quick general attack which was to annihilate the camp in three nights and two days. But during a staff briefing, after in-depth analysis of the latest information, I realized that such an attack was not 100% sure of success. One of the fundamental rules, if not the most fundamental rule of Vietnamese military science, is that in war you must win. Both sides had a special reason for wanting to win at Dien Bien Phu. At this same time, January 1954, the great powers were meeting in Berlin. On March 13th, Jop launched his attack on Dien Bien Phu. The battle began with massive human wave assaults. The Viet Minh guns blanketed French artillery from positions so well dug in and camouflaged that the French planes could not get at them. On March 13th, Jop launched his attack on Dien Bien Phu. The battle began, as the Chinese advisors had insisted, with massive human wave assaults. The heroism of these shock troops has become part of the Dien Bien Phu legend, as in the story of the Viet Minh soldier who stopped a French machine gun. The comrade used hand grenades, dynamite, and his guns to try to destroy that machine gun. Finally, comrade Phan Dinh Gop used his body to cover the foxhole. The enemy sent up a lot of flares, and it was a moonlit night. We all saw how Phan Dinh Gop threw his body over the foxhole. And then the company commander yelled out, Charge! The Viet Minh guns blanketed French artillery from positions so well dug in and camouflaged that the French planes could not get at them. The French command staff was shocked. Colonel de Castre became withdrawn, uncommunicative. On the second night, the artillery commander committed suicide. The French command staff was shocked. Colonel de Castre became withdrawn, uncommunicative. On the second night, the artillery commander committed suicide. Men who were wounded in the trenches sunk under the yard-high mud to die.
I arrived during the night of May 2nd. Men who were wounded in the trenches sunk under the yard-high mud to die. Yet 4,000 reinforcements dropped into the battlefield, most of them volunteers. And like the Viet Minh, the French side created legends of heroism. At one point, a foreign legionnaire company went into battle singing their paratroop songs. They were followed by a Vietnamese company, but the army of the state of Vietnam was still too young to have its own marching songs. The Vietnamese paratroopers sang the French national anthem as they fought their brother Vietnamese. Dien Bien Phu was in peril, and for the first time, France made urgent requests to the United States to intervene. The well, French did request air support to help prevent the Viet Minh from uh, winning a victory there. I happened to be present at a breakfast in the White House, a very small breakfast. Uh, Secretary of State Dulles, the President, Secretary of State Dulles, Admiral Radford, myself, one or two others, in which this request was discussed. I recall very vividly that uh, Admiral Radford uh, mentioned that he had two carriers standing a couple of hundred miles off the coast in international waters and that he could deliver uh, airstrikes from those carriers in support of the French in Dien Bien Phu. They studied alternatives, including the possible use of tactical atomic weapons. Eisenhower decided the United States should not act alone. Secretary Dulles went to consult the Allies. He made a trip to London uh, in which he discussed this with uh, who was then Foreign Minister Eden, uh, Anthony Eden, and uh, felt sufficiently confident from his visit there and his visit to France that he called a meeting in Washington uh, in order to begin preliminary discussions. It was a great shock to him when the British ambassador informed him just a day or two before the meeting was to be held that he was under instructions not uh, to attend. The British were afraid that the Washington meeting would jeopardize the Geneva Conference. Eisenhower would not act without them, rejecting the advice of Vice President Nixon and Secretary Dulles, among others. They all sent Cambodia. For now, the United States would not intervene in Vietnam. Ever since the Berlin Agreement to seek peace in Indochina, the communist forces have stepped up the intensity and the scope of their aggression. They have expended their manpower in reckless assaults, apparently designed to improve their bargaining position at Geneva. That is not a good prelude to Geneva. As we went into the conference, there was the concern that we had no relations with communist China. Secondly, if, as seemed probable, the participants would have to recognize the Viet Minh, a communist subversive movement which had derived heavy support from both China and Russia, we would be recognizing at the conference table participants who were basically communist revolutionaries and subversionists rather than a government in existence. Uh, thirdly, there were some who were uh, very much concerned by the prospect of recognizing a subversive revolutionary regime such as the Viet Minh turning over to a territory to administer because this would be the first time since the uh, fall of uh, uh, China to the communists that uh, uh, there had been a further advance in Asia. The conference opened on April 26th with Britain and the Soviet Union presiding. Dulles, a staunch opponent of communist China, refused to shake hands with Zhou Enlai and left Geneva after only a week. Four days after that, the day before the talks formally turned to Indochina, Dian Bien Phu fell. I arrived during the night of May 2nd. I lost consciousness. And when I came to, there was above me, very close, 
a surgeon's mask from which a voice came, you are a prisoner of the army of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Though Viet Minh combat cameramen were present at Dien Bien Phu, I lost consciousness, and when I came to, there was above me, very close, a surgeon's mask from which a voice came, you are a prisoner of the army of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Do not move, you are badly wounded, and we will take care of you. From that moment, I had left the Greek, Latin, Judeo-Christian world to pass into the world of the red termites. When we arrived, one comrade attacked this entrance. Another comrade attacked the other entrance. They threw grenades in. And I myself ran to the bunker of General de Kast and put up the flag. The bunker had sandbags piled up in the form of a pyramid. So when I put up the flag, I put the flagpole in the sandbags. Though Viet Minh combat cameramen were present at Dien Bien Phu, they turned the political conference into a military conference. In June, the French cabinet fell. They turned the political conference into a military conference. After six weeks, the conference had made no headway. In June, the French cabinet fell. If Mendes France failed, France might keep fighting and America might intervene. Reason and peace have won out. If Mendes France failed, France might keep fighting and America might intervene. A peaceful settlement was, insofar as they saw it, the first half of the, uh, the first bite of the apple. Uh, they had half of Vietnam. They had uh, recognition of the Viet Minh as a de facto government by the West and as a government in authority for all of Vietnam by uh, Russia and China. Uh, they avoided the possibility that we might become involved in the hostilities uh, in a way which would uh, represent a very serious setback unless the uh, Russians and Chinese also became involved. I uh, think that the uh, Viet Minh accepted the concept of taking the, the area in two bites, uh, so to speak, uh, because they, they were very self-confident themselves that uh, they could handle the South. And the South itself didn't have uh, viability, and uh, therefore uh, it was a fairly good, uh, good bet. I received the American ambassador who told me in Geneva, they are going to partition your country. Then the army that you put together will be demobilized and will become a peacekeeping militia. I answered, in these conditions, don't count on me anymore. The South Vietnamese delegation made it very clear and very explicit that they were not agreeing to the uh, elections after two years. And we made it very clear that we did not agree to the uh, election provisions that were embodied in the final declaration. As everybody knows, the United States opposed the conference and tried its best to sabotage. When the conference produced results, the United States refused to sign the accord. This attitude explains the subsequent actions of the United States. On July 21st, 1954, only a few hours after Mandas France's deadline, the conference ended with an ambiguous agreement. In fact, there was no single Geneva agreement. The uh, Geneva agreement, so-called, was a complex of many agreements. The principal ones were the armistice agreements between the Viet Minh forces and the French command. 
The uh, final piece of paper was a declaration of Geneva, in which the participants at the conference took note, was the usual term. Thus, there's nothing that either we nor the South Vietnamese, quote, violated, unquote, after, quote, signing, unquote, the agreements, because we didn't sign them, and, we didn't, and therefore we didn't violate anything. La raison et la paix l'ont emporté. Reason and peace have won out. Après des journées et des nuits... This program was produced by WGBH Boston, which is solely responsible for its content.